I'm going to New York today, trying to put an end to the 2018 travel drought. I'm trying to figure out where this Lyft driver is. I got it. Okay, on time, we're for the shore. We do have a uh, air traffic control uh, takeoff time due to the weather up in Newark tonight of uh, 34 after the hour. Shouldn't have any significant uh, impact on the flight. We should have down to Newark if I went on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Newark Tiberia International Airport. The local time is 11.12 p.m. So made it to Newark, waiting on a person that you guys have seen before. And as usual, he's late. There's my guy. What's up, dude? So just to give you a little background, I organized this entire trip because I had an Intercontinental Hotel certificate which was expiring at the end of the month and New York was the cheapest place I can go to to redeem that certificate for a $500 room or something that's a little bit more expensive and something I'd normally not pay for. And my cousin picked me up at the airport because he lives in New Jersey and we've always wanted to do some street photography and photography in New York City. What we didn't anticipate was the hotel throwing a wrench into our plans. You'll see what I mean the following morning. Yeah, 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 we made it to New York, and then this happened. Ridiculous view out the window of this room. Let's not talk about window. Let's talk about balcony. Midtown Manhattan right there. Lower Manhattan right there. Brooklyn Bridge, Manhattan Bridge. Williamsburg Bridge is somewhere back there. It's really funny because last night we thought that building over there was the Empire State Building. That's the Chrysler Building. And we thought one of the buildings over here was one World Trade Center. In the fog and uh, in the night lights and everything, you can't tell anything. This is just like a joke. But you can see Oh, how many compositions there are with all the streets and everything <laughs> I'm crunched up I'll roll through some of the images right now so this first image is perhaps my favorite image of New York City that I've ever taken because it gives off the Gotham City vibe with the cool colors at the top and slowly warming up towards the bottom you have the mist that's shrouding some of the buildings and then you have uh, the warmer tones that have been saturated by the rain that's fallen in New York City uh, and then you have the taxi cabs you have all the elements which make New York City a concrete jungle and this scene for me feels like almost almost like uh, you can envision Batman standing in the very back of the frame and it really complete the image but uh, it's, it is really my favorite image of the city and Gotham City is something I've always wanted to photograph if you guys understand and uh, this is the closest I've come to doing that. So the second image is a little bit more of the same vibe, the Gotham City vibe with the cool tones but you don't have 
the transition to the warmer tones here but what I really like about this image is the fact that you can see two streets in the city going straight out and you have a clear depiction of the concrete jungle that is New York City and it's a really nice view that we had from our hotel balcony and this is a look at downtown Manhattan if this were daylight you can actually see the Brooklyn Bridge way in the distance so this next image is a bit more of a fun image for me um, I first photographed it because the lights looked very much like a Tetris game for me but once I've captured it and processed it, it felt a little bit more like something you'd find in a comic book or anime series that I've read. And that's really where I get my inspiration from uh, to do photography. The novels I've read, the comic books I've seen, and this picture was something that I probably saw in a comic book somewhere. And I just decided to recreate it based on a scene I saw from this balcony. So. I guess comic books and novels can be creative inspirations for photography. So now we transition to the images we took the following morning. And this first image is my favorite of the lot because the the building in the foreground or the building the main building in this image looks very much like a Jenga tower. And I immediately as soon as I saw it coming through the fog, I was like Jenga. And it turns out that me calling it the Jenga Tower isn't original to me because New Yorkers also call it the Jenga Tower and it's actually called 56 Leonard Street and it's a very photogenic building in the Lower East Side. So these next two images are of iconic structures in New York just emerging through the fog and this first one's obviously of One World Trade Center or Freedom Tower as it showed itself that morning what I really like about this image is the fact that there's this building at the leftmost corner of the frame which makes it feel like the Freedom Tower isn't something that's mystical or part of the sky but rather part of the earth and just as I was capturing this image uh, the, the Empire State Building was emerging on the other side and I turned my camera that way and I shot this. And this was pretty much when we figured out that a certain side was Midtown Manhattan and another side was Downtown Manhattan. Are you ready to go? Let's go. Yep. Let's do it. Last shot. Oculus and uh, trying to work on some street photography because uh, Brooklyn Bridge Park was a bust, an absolute bust. There was construction cranes, there was blue skies, it was just not the scene we were imagining. But look at this. There's a lot of potential here with 
the people that walk by in that frame right there and the big structure known as the oculus i feel like it should be something kind of virtual reality like oculus rift but it does look like a virtual reality i guess anyway it's all about the framing if you look at that man he's standing right in the middle of i think isn't the, isn't he the one that you're photographing now yeah yeah he's sitting he's standing right in the middle right there looking straight on and then he's got the shot right there let's get your phone call walk around for a bit explore for a bit and then we'll do a photography challenge and then that'll be it for now let's see what we can do See, hand railing land is good ball. Yeah. So what I'm essentially doing right now is using my cousin as a model and framing him as he looks out over his entire area with his camera. And just a second ago, there weren't as many people, so you have to wait until the next wave of people just pass by, and then you can take the shot once again. See right there. I'll show you on the camera what I'm doing and uh, basically I just drop the F down as slow as possible so that the background is smooth and he stands out against the background and uh, yeah right now there's two people obstructing the view so uh, yeah uh, time to take the picture Okay, so, so much for a challenge because we're both on the same composition. You see these wonderful shadows of the windows high above falling right on the floor of this space. And there are people walking straight through it and there's beautiful shadows uh, that are forming and we're taking pictures of that. That's exactly what we're doing right now. And I think we only have about 15 minutes left in parking. So, got to make this 15 minutes count. So, about oh, 10 minutes now. It's already been 15 minutes since, it's five minutes since uh, he told us we had 15 minutes. A beautiful position right there. Just leading lines, everything. So this is an image that I like to call the breakup. To so give you a little bit of background on this image, there is this one man that you see at the foreground of this frame that just stood there for the longest time. And the way he was standing there wasn't making quite the image that I that envisioned. And before, just before I, was, I had given up on this frame, this lady just aligned, him, aligned herself right behind him and walked in the opposite direction. And the way they were positioned, it looked like they had interacted and they were just going their separate ways. So it reminded me a little bit of the big breakup. And I love how both of them are looking at their phone intently, which makes it feel like a little bit more like a business-like breakup sort of thing. I, of course, captioned it as the breakup. If you guys have a better caption for it, please leave it down in the comments below. After we spent the day playing tennis and doing all sorts of things, we made our way back to Jersey City that same evening for some more photography. And we checked into the Hyatt House at Exchange Place so that we would have an opportunity to photograph the city the following morning. Here's what happened. It is approximately an hour before sunrise and I am going out to photograph the city. This time from New Jersey, not my hotel room. The forecast uh, looks to be 65% high clouds, and that's a decent chance of getting some light on clouds. I'm using the app Clear Outside to predict the weather, or it does the predictions for me. You guys must be wondering at this point how the heck is this guy? Predicting how good the sunrise will be. 
I use Clear Outside. I'll link down below to that app. Sorry guys, I'm just so sleepy. Okay, I won't waste too much time. Let's go. Okay, the big perk about staying in Jersey City is that the, both the Hyatt Regency over here in Exchange Place and the Hyatt House where I'm staying are right across from the best view in all of New York. Well, the second best view. The best view is in Brooklyn, anyway. But, uh, yeah. You can see the start of Blue Hour going on right there and actually no clouds at all which sucks honestly but the day must begin and I'm not gonna blow a second sunrise on this trip which is already too short Normally, there'd be a lot more b-roll and I'd get here and then set up and that sort of thing But there are not 65% high cloud skies It's just gonna be blue hour and then there's gonna be one high cloud over there over the Empire State Building So not the ideal conditions. I think I've already shot the ideal conditions in this location I am going to shoot a picture of this location really quickly, Lower Manhattan, and maybe pan over to mid Midtown Manhattan, and then uh, walk over there, because that seems to be where the light's going to be a little better. It's not going to be the greatest morning on Earth. <sighs> a little disappointing, but uh, hey, whatever it is, uh, I suppose, at this point. Yeah, not many high clouds at all. Not even to the west, actually. So, or maybe they're above my head, actually. Now that I look at it, that's why I can see it. All right, first picture done. Just lower Manhattan, guys. Showed up, did a long exposure, F10, 30 seconds. Here it is. Moving over. So the high clouds didn't really happen and the colors were kind of muted. So I was just hoping that beyond hope that these birds that were flying around would just make their way over the skyline. But instead they just made their way over the water, disturbing the reflections. And uh, frankly, what happened later was a cruise ship came by and that was the end of it. No more photography of the skyline for that morning. So I don't want to mislead you, I did get one shot and it was right before the sun came up right behind the buildings of New York City and the city lights were already turned off. There was this brilliant pink hue that was reflecting off of one Wall Street Center and it made for a decent image with the long exposure and ND filter but I would hardly call this groundbreaking. After that flop of a sunrise, we just walked around Jersey City taking images of random buildings, which actually make for better compositions than the ones we took at Blue Hour and Sunrise. Take a look for yourself. camera much because I thought this morning was a flop. I did get some good images 
I'll roll through them right now. Unfortunately, it's such a short trip that I'm leaving. So back to Texas. So just a few images in New York and that was it. A very brief stay. See you in Texas. Hours, 10 minutes. We'll climb the aircraft up to 34,000 feet above sea level. It's going to be a bumpy ride off and on. You're probably going to have the seatbelt sign on most of the evening. If we can find some smooth, smooth air, we will. It's just the weather system that's moving across the central part of the U.S. is, is affecting the rides. I'd like to welcome you to Dallas Fort Worth. Local time here is approximately 11:34. To summarize things, this trip cost me 20,000 life miles for a flight between Newark and Dallas and Dallas to Newark and one intercontinental hotel certificate for the night at the Hotel Indigo Lower East Side and one Hyatt certificate for a night at the Hyatt House Jersey City and luckily my transportation was covered because my cousin lives in the area and I could go in and out of the city you know, in his car. So that was the total cost for the trip. If you like the content on this channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to hear more about this trip, please check out grabamile.boardingarea.com.